Good evening, guys. In today's session, we are going to discuss about looping statements in JavaScript. In previous session, we discussed about the conditional statements, the web statements we seen, and we implemented some examples as well. And we understand how a condition is going to be uh, evaluated and nothing but expression, how the expression is going to be evaluated, how the condition is going to be evaluated, and all we seen, and we did with some examples. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the looping statements. Before going to this looping statements, first let us know what is a loop, right? So generally, what people will say, what is meant by a loop here, right? Loop. Some people may think loop means a circle, right? Seriously, is loop means a circle? Or what I want to say, loop means it's a closure path. So whatever the shape it may have, it may have a triangle shape, it may have a rectangle shape, or it may have any different kind of shape, then I will call it as a loop. Nothing but guys, it's simply a closure path. A loop may have any kind of shape that may be a circle, that may be a rectangle, that may be a triangle, whatever it may be. This is called a loop. Here, I want to show you uh, some of the examples for loop. I can say this is a loop, right? Yes, we can call it a loop. And definitely, and this is also going to be a loop, right? This is also going to be a loop and whatever it may be, and everything is going to be loop. And I'm using this uh, uh, chart, right? Something like, so this is, I'm using something called common and everything is a common, everything is a, a kind of shape. But what are all the shape I mentioned here? All the shapes are having closure path. Definitely, I can say this is a loop. Sometimes uh, when we are playing games, generally we have something called lap. So they will call four laps, three laps completed, five laps completed, right? The lap, the game path may be look like this. So it may be like this, it may be sometimes, it may be like this, the closure path. So if we can finish one lap, then I can say one round completed. Second lap, second round completed, third lap. What I want to say, a loop is always a closure path, right? I think what, so what for loop can do for us, what a for loop can do, and we've seen a lot of loops guys here, uh, can you see what are the looping statements we have? These are the looping statements we have for while, do while. If we can understand for loop very clearly and remaining loops are going to be very easy, first try to understand for loop. Before going to this, first let us see the syntax of for loop, how the for loop is going to work in the first let me show you the syntax of for loop. Here, just I want to write for and the thing is nothing but initialization and the second thing is condition here. And the third one is incrementation or decrementation. We can write anyone here. So I'm simply shorthand. I am writing INC and DEC. That is another one, incrementation. Decrementation. So this is immediately followed by the block of code. Yes, here we will write some statements, some valid JavaScript statements we are going to write to repeat the thing. So what a loop can do? A loop can repeat the job continuously up to the, up to the condition is going to be false. I want to do a repeated job. Earlier, we seen conditional statements also. Can you see? This is the conditional statement earlier we see. This is also a block of code. But how many times this block of code is going to be executed? Only one time. Why? So if the condition is evaluated to true, then this block of code executed that to only one time. But here, this block of code is going to be executed multiple times until the condition is going to be false. So this is how the thing. So let me show you and what is a uh, condition, what is an initialization, incrementation, decrementation. But one thing remember before going to this, before going to do some examples, I just want to tell you every loop has a starting point and an ending point. So every loop has a starting point and an ending point. What is the starting point? A starting point is nothing but your initialization, ending point is nothing but your condition. I mean, I want to start from this location to that location. And how many times I have to repeat the same job? Two times, three times, four times, 10 times, right? We don't know. So your condition will always tell you the ending point. Your initialization will always tell you the starting point of the loop and the incrementation, decrementation. For every loop iteration, I have to increment plus one, plus one, plus one, or I have decrement minus one, minus one, minus one. For example, you are participating in a game. They are saying that you have to complete three rounds. For example, this is the diagram we are seeing here. You have to finish three laps. So this is the starting point of the game. So you have to start here. You have to roam around the lap and you have to come to the same point. Then I can say one. So immediately plus one, you have to add it, right? So first one lap is completed. Then you have to make it as plus one. Then you start in the second loop. For that second, I have to add plus one. Then you start in the third loop. So after third loop completed, I will say stop the game. 
So if you want to win the game, you have to complete three laps here. Yes, that is done. So I mean, what I want to say here, for every iteration, we need to increment one value or we need to decrement one value. This is nothing but incrementation and decrementation. What is your initialization? Starting point. What is your condition? So nothing but the ending point. How many times I need to iterate this job? So we are going to write some logic here. Some logic will come. So how many times I want to write this? I want to repeat this logic. 10 times, 5 times, only one time. So this is nothing but depends on condition. For any for a loop, guys, remember, initialization is not mandatory and the incrementation decrementation is not mandatory. With the only condition also, we can write. So what I want to say here, there is no initialization simply. Here just we will write something called condition. Yes, we can write like this also. We can there is no incrementation decrementation. This we can go like this also. But if the condition is met to false, if the condition is met to true, then the block of will be executed. And one more thing. Here we are doing a repeated logic. So logic is executing, 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 continuously is executing. But we have to stop it now. So at particular point of time, I have to stop it. The particular point is nothing but our condition. This condition will evaluate the thing. So once the condition meets to false, the block of code will be eliminated. The same we know. The conditional statements also we see in this case. So if this condition is true, then only block of code will be executed the same manner in the for loop also if this condition is okay then only the block of code will be executed otherwise the block of code will never execute space here okay let me show you an example here here i just want to print one to ten numbers this is one to ten numbers i want to print okay you don't have looping statements then how you will print this one to ten numbers the, oh, the only one thing you have to write one two three four by using documented or write method, you have to write one, two, three, four, ten times you have to write. Okay, we will write it. Even though it may be hard, we will write it. I'm asking you to write, I am asking you try to print hundred times. But the, no, you cannot use for loop. You cannot use any loop. First of all, you don't know loops. So you have to print one to hundred numbers. You have to print one to thousand numbers. Is it easy? Okay, somewhat easy. Now I'm asking you print the one to ten thousand numbers. Then so we have to think it sir is there any simple solution yes we have a simple solution that is nothing but the loops guys here loops will make our job very simple they will repeat a job they will repeat a task until the condition is going to be false guys let us print one to ten numbers here so by using the for loop and we already know the syntax of the for loop right let us write the task for that my requirement is 1 to 10 so i have to start this is my starting point because i have to start the loop from 1 to 10 because my requirement is that what is my requirement so i'm asking you guys to print 1 to 10 numbers this is my requirement i'm asking you one to 10 numbers i'm asking you. so where i have to start the loop from one now i started one and this loop should iterate up to 10 times high less than or equal to and this is what the loop should be iterated and this is going to be incremented. I I'm incrementing one to 10, that is increment, right? If you can say 10 to one, that is going to be decrement. 10, nine, eight, seven is going to be decrement. One, two, three, four is the increment, right? So I need to use plus plus operator here, right? So let us come here and let us check it. So here, nothing. I just want to print a message document dot write off welcome. Let us write something called welcome here and you can just check it so how this is going to work now so let me refresh the page and let me run the file so you can check it for the browser and run the file and you can see the welcome was printed 10 times can you see if you can count it is going to be 10 times no you don't want to uh, see this into horizontal way you want to see this in vertical way yes so we can write a break tag at the end of it so here we can write simply a break tag. then the welcome will be I'm like this can you see this is welcome welcome so this was repeated 10 times so the same message was printed 10 times so you want to make something like this so you can see i want to write so plus i if you don't want this you can remove this just you can take i here so then what is going to happen you can see one to ten minutes this is what we are expecting we don't want any message here so just i want to print one to ten numbers yes i'm able to print one to ten numbers you want to print both to 10 numbers as well as welcome message then we can do like this guys we can we have to concatenate here i is a variable and uh, here we are going to write something called welcome and welcome is a string right so i need to do something called break that now you can see the output will be like this one two three four five six seven you want to keep some dot here then you can write something called dot here 
then it will be looked like this. One dot, welcome, two dot, welcome, three dot, welcome, something like the way he is nothing but one to ten numbers you want to print. If you don't want, you can remove it, no problem. Right? This you can just remove it, or else let me keep this in comment as you can write this. Simply, I'm printing only a variable called i here, and if you can see, my output will be like this one to ten numbers. Right? If you want, you can use break tag as well. But here, I want to check how the loop is going to be iterated here. Guys, let me explain you the loop iteration. So how the for loop will iterate this value and all. Let me check it. Here, let me make my loop very simple. I less than or equal to five. So then what is going to happen? So one to five numbers, one, one, two, three, four, five. How this is going to be evaluated? First, let me copy this loop guys here. Let me try to explain you how this is going to be works. Let me remove all this stuff here. Let me copy the code here. This is what the loop we have. One minute, please. So here, just I want to make some enter button. So something like this, something, okay. So just nothing but I want to show you the flow, loop flow. That's why I'm taking some gap here, line by line gap here, so that you will understand very clearly, right? Here, can you see I equal to one? So how the equation will start here? So that's we need to understand guys here. All of you check it carefully. So here you can understand so this is exactly initialization. We know that that is initialization. And we know this is a condition. And we know that this is incrementation and decrementation. First, how the loop evaluation will start here, right? That's what we need to check it here. Remember carefully, the loop evaluation will always start from in this, where i equal to one. From here, so it is going for immediately the condition, right? So first step this is, first you are initializing the value. After initialization is complete, it is going to check the condition. What is the i value? One. So in this situation, it is going to be one, one less than or equal to five. Condition true, no? Condition true. If the condition is true, immediately the block of code is going to be executed. So what is the I value you say over there? I value is one. So then what is going to happen? One is going to be printed, guys. Here. So one is printed. So immediately, once the one is printed, so what is going to happen from here? So remember one more thing. This block of code may contain n number of statements here. So I've just written one statement here. Once after executing all the statement in the block, then what is going to happen, you know, it is going for, from after executing all the statement, then it will go for implementation. So what is the meaning of implementation here? I plus uh, plus. What is the meaning of I plus plus here? Simply, I'm writing I plus plus. This is also equal to I equal to I plus one. What is the meaning of it? What is the value of I here? So value of i, if you can evaluate it, what is the value of i? One, and one plus one, it is going to be two now. So in this situation, i value is going to overrides. What is the meaning of it? i value is going to overrides here. i value initially one, this one is going to be overrides with the two now guys. This is going to be two now, right? So you can see, let me remove this one here. So now this is going to be two now. So again, what is going to happen? The loop should be iterated. So this is going to be two. That's it. Now again, from two again, where it will go? Can you see here? It will come again. So can you see this is going to be here. So now I value is two. Two less than or equal to five, condition true. Then immediately it will come here. What is the value? The two is going to be printed here. The two is going to be printed, guys. After printing two, immediately it will go here. And now I plus one. What is the I value two? Two plus one, it is going to be three. So this two is going to override with the three, guys. Now. What is going to happen here? This is going to be overridden with a three. That's it. The value is three here. Let us, or else let me remove it. So value is going to be incremented. This is going to be three. Now three. Three less than or equal to five. So once it is going to be evaluated, then what is going to high value initialize it with a three? Now again it will come here. Three less than or equal to five. Condition true. Immediately it is come here. The three is going to be printed. Of that is coming back here. Three plus one again, it will be four. Now this value is going to be overrated to the four guys. This value. What is the value we are able to see? Three. So this is going to be four now. So then, like this, the loop is going to be iterated until the condition is going to be false. Okay, let us uh, uh, check it. So this is four now. Four less than or equal to five. Condition true. It will come here. Four is going to be printed here. 
So once four is printed, what is going to happen here? So four is printed. So this state, uh, this statement will print the four. After printing the four, it is with four plus one. Four plus one will be five. So like this, the loop is going to be iterated up to the condition is going to be false. Let us see now I value. What is the I value now? I value is five guys. Now you can check it. Five less than or equal to five. Condition true or false? Huh? Definitely. Condition is true. Five less than or equal to five. Condition is true. Five and here, what is going to happen? The value I is going to be printed. What is the I value? Now five is printed. Can you see the value five? is printed so 5 is printed after printing the 5 it will go here 5 plus 1 now 6 is yes. after printing 5 loop will never terminate check it carefully so it will come here what is the thing 5 plus 1 6 now so can you see this value is 6 here this is important thing guys try to understand here so this is going to be 6 6 here and i less than or equal to 5 what is the i, I value here 6 sir. 6 less than or equal to 5 condition is false then false you will exit the loop guys so this is how the loop is going to be iterated continuously like this so but the loop should be terminated the block of code should be terminated when if the condition is going to be false this is how the loop iteration is going to work simply said what i want to say here how this loop is working can you see the loop is first it is going with initialization of the condition of the block of statement of that again incrementation of incrementation again it is going for initialization of that again condition block of code incrementation again condition oh, sorry initialization and condition block of code and this is going to be happening can you see here you are able to see some different kind of shape whatever it may be the shape may be like this maybe some kind of shape we are able to see but this is the closed part so where I have started a loop i'm coming to the same point at the end of it right this is nothing but loop, right how a loop will work this is how the for loop is going to work and in the later sessions we are going to see more examples on these for loop guys we can see prime number generation Fibonacci series and a lot of examples we can see by using for loop yes this is not this is nothing but how the for loop is going to work and this is loop iteration process guys thank you and we will see in the next class to discuss about lot of programs on the for loop thank you guys